So there's a bunch of new monopods from iFootage, and you might be wondering, what are the differences from the original, from each other, and should you get the upgrade? First off, there are four monopods here, plus their new video head, so I'm going to discuss that at the end as well, and there are minor differences between each one of them. Before we get into it, I quickly need to mention that this is a sponsored review. However, that does not mean I'm paid to say anything. I'm allowed to have all the negative and positive feedback that I want. So these are all Cobra 3 monopods, which are the next one after the Cobra 2, which you remember I reviewed a little while back. If you want to check that video out, I will link it up here. The main upgrades or differences is that the feet are a lot bigger here on these Cobra 3 monopods, so that will give you extra stability while using the monopod. The quick release latches for extending the tripod sections have been made more ergonomically, so they're a lot easier to use, release, and clamp down nice and easily. Each one of these monopods are a little bit smaller now. They're not as thick, a little bit thinner of a tube, which makes them a little bit more lightweight, so that's nice to have when you're out and about with them. You'll notice that each one now has the ability to have a wrist strap that you can also take off if you prefer not to have it on the top of each monopod. Additionally, one of the biggest upgrades is the new quick release release lock mechanism. If you're familiar with iFootage's monopods, their quick release is really quite ingenious. However, they have improved it now. So now when you pull it down, it actually locks in place. And then when you go to put the camera back on or maybe pop it into the feet at the bottom, it actually just locks into place. All you have to do is press it down till it clicks. There's no more two hands to use this quick release function. You just use one when you're putting the items back together. So those are the major upgrades or differences between the old Cobra 2 monopod and the new Cobra 3 monopods. At this point, might be wondering what are the differences between each of these four monopods? Why are you getting one over the other? So let me break that down for you. First we have the C180F. This stands for carbon fiber. 180 is how tall it is, so 180 centimeters. And I, the F I believe stands for feet, but once again they're the longer feet, so it's different from the Cobra 2. Just keep that in mind. Next we have the A180F. This stands for aluminum 180 centimeters. So the only difference here is that the material made out of the monopod section is different. It's aluminum versus carbon fiber. Thirdly, we have the A180T and the T stands for twist lock. This is the only one that is a twist lock design, which is pretty popular among other monopods out there from other brands. There are no other differences. The feet and everything else is exactly the same as the other monopods. The fourth and final one is the most different from them all as it is one of their newest designed pieces and it is the C180 F P. This stands for foot pedal. So as you might imagine, this has a foot pedal that is a 360 fluid head. You press down on the foot pedal, you can move it in 360 directions. You can adjust the fluid tension on it as well. And then when you release the foot pedal and you pull the monopod back towards center, it adjusts and locks into perfect center every single time. Now, if you like the idea of the new feet, whether that's the foot pedal, or if you just like the larger feet that are on all of these new monopods, you can actually buy the feet by themselves. So you can get the foot pedal or the non-foot pedal one and they both have the larger feet so that maybe if you want that extra stability on your older monopods uh, from iFootage then you can just pop them in and use them. However, I would like to take a second to talk about these monopods and what I like about each one of them as I've been using them. I would like to start out with saying that I don't like the twist lock monopod. For me, twist locks are super annoying because you can accidentally twist them or something like that as you're traveling or walking about with them and you'll extend the legs and they'll just all drop. So if you were going to rely on a monopod pod to be stable and secure every single time you're using it. I would say the twist lock is just not the way to go because it always has that ability to just easily unlock, unfortunately. And another reason why I don't like the twist lock is because if you just tug on it to see how much weight it can hold, it actually pushes down even when it's in locked position all the way twisted nice and tight. So to me, it's really not the best. And this is quite possibly why it is the cheapest one. It's just if you're trying to get into monopods and have something decent, you're not putting heavy setups on it and you're not worried about that twist lock thing, then great, it's a great monopod. But otherwise, I think for professionals, you probably wanna stay away from the twist lock monopod. Moving on to the A180 and C180F, that means just the regular old foot. Um, I do like these, they have been great. I think for me, the differences between choosing aluminum and carbon fiber are really minimal, so if you're really big into having a preference on that, then of course pick accordingly. There is a slight price difference of about $30 because carbon fiber costs more to manufacture. So if you're into carbon fiber, it's a little bit more lightweight feeling. The aluminum one has a slight bit more heft, but really when I hold them in both hands, they feel very similar as far as weight is concerned. And lastly, we have the C180F. 
P. That is the foot pedal. For me, the reason why I like this monopod so much was for the foot pedal. Otherwise, everything is the same as the other monopods. I will say it is a little limited. You can't lean it as far forward or to the sides or whatever like you can the other monopods because those are all ball heads that you can just move around in literally any direction. You could put it at a 90 degree angle as well on the other monopods. This is great. However, the hardest thing with those monopods and one of the reasons why I get frustrated with them is because it's so hard to get them back to a perfectly centered monopod where it's just stuck straight up and it's nice and level. With the foot pedal one, it's so easy because it just locks back to center. It knows exactly where center is. However, it can't move past a certain angle. It really doesn't have as much reach as far as forward, back, all the sides and stuff like that as the other monopods. So it's something to definitely keep in mind, one of the biggest differences. At this point, I think it's useful just to mention what features I think are the most beneficial and the ones that I use the most. So for me, the foot pedal obviously used it the most love it. I love the feet. So that's been super helpful. It feels more secure and I can leave my camera kind of by itself just a little bit without fear that it's going to fall over or something from the wind as much. I still would be cautious about it. The other feature that I absolutely love, it's my favorite, is the new quick release lock system. It makes it so much faster to get your shot. So if you're transitioning from being up on your monopod and you quick release the top off and then put it into the feet at the bottom because you want a low angle shot really quick, it is so fast and so convenient. And of course, I love all the other features. The only features I would say I didn't really care for was the new wrist strap thing. I didn't find it personally helpful, but that's okay. In short, I've loved them. I've always loved their monopods. And I just like to see that the improvements are making it a lot easier to get your shots and do what you need to do. Speaking of which, on the new iFootage video head, the K5S, which is right here, iFootage listened to its customers with some feedback and decided to make some small changes. The small changes were that they made the knobs a little bit bigger so they're easier to find and access for the fluid drag system. So for your pan and for your tilt. They also changed the grooved disc for attaching the handle to the K5. Apparently the materials that they were using before were kind of getting beat up by some users. So they improved it so that it was more rigid and would last a lot longer. They also decided to enlarge the base of the K5S and they also upgraded the dampening disc so that it was a little bit stronger. So therefore you'd have smoother shots, especially with heavier setups on this K5S video head. All these improvements are just designed to give you that much more of an edge. I personally think that if you have the older one and you like it, it's still great. It might not be worth the upgrade, but if you're in the market for a video head, that is a really good one. I've been using it here on this setup and then also out and about as I was shooting and it was working out nice and smoothly. The only complaint I have about the video head is that it does have a little bubble leveler on it. However, it's really tiny. Sometimes it's very hard to see, if not impossible. Overall, I would say that the monopod upgrades, video head upgrades have been great. I've loved them. In fact, they make the monopods more attractive. So if you're interested in them, you should probably grab one if you don't own one already, because I personally love iFootage's stuff. They're really well designed, intentional, and they're just quite handy to have around. So if you're interested, the links are in the description. If you use them, it supports the channel. So thank you for doing that. If you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thank you